our pastor. Is it on or it is recording? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for a wonderful morning. Christ has come. Lord, we thank you for what he's done. And my God is real today. Lord, there's many situations as we've heard that are before you. My God, we know that you're here and you answer prayer. So Lord, we're holding on to you. We're looking to you for this service. We're asking your blessings. Lord, that you will anoint open hearts and minds. May we get our portion, Lord. Truly, there's something for each and every one of us. We ask you to bless it and especially pray this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank God. Amen. Our Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you. Tell me, please, to the uh, Book of Psalms, chapter 119. Uh, Verse number 67. Before I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted. I went astray. I went astray. But now have I kept my word, my word. Oh, but I learned something. I kept the words after you messed me up. Come on, man. Thou art good. Thou art good. And do us good. And do us good. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. All right. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't say that before I was afflicted. You pray with me. Uh, that's our thoughts this morning, before I was afflicted, before I was afflicted. Uh, we need some definition this morning because uh, this is something that is uh, unavoidable. And for one reason or another, at some time or another, we all went through it. But if you're going to heaven, however, uh, you might circumvent it. Uh, but to your own uh, destruction. So, uh, the definition for affliction is to correct by punishment or suffering. There is before God uh, brought me to a place of suffering, and He knows just what's being the poor to get to you. Are you playing with me? You get this because this is, is essential. We're living in a time now where people are striving with all their might to circumvent anything that might cause any degree of suffering. Get around it. I mean, they're shortcut the word of God. They'll do anything to uh, alter their predicament. Not realizing that their salvation is predicated on that. Listen. You listen to me. Every almost can be misleading. Uh, when efforts, uh, uh, events, uh, situations arises and they discuss it, it's always in favor of the flesh. I don't think this is necessary. This is not necessary. This is not necessary anymore. Hello, brother. Uh, we don't have to go that far. We're being extreme. Every decision, and now we're in a messy situation that's almost irreversible. Hello, brother. No suffering. They make exception for everything now to get you out of suffering. And people, common people, will grab hold to it. But they don't want to suffer. But when Paul was saved, the Lord said, Paul, I'm going to show you what great thing you must suffer. Now, uh, whatever the area of suffering, uh, or whatever might be your particular plight, something that's peculiar to you, he said, I'm going to spray. And God only taught me how to be steadfast and resolute by suffering. My Lord, brother. If you follow me. And there was, there's no way around it. Jesus suffered, our example. But now, uh, we, this society has devised a means whereby, uh, well, then, you know, you don't suffer nothing. Nobody suffer poverty. We have ADC and all these kinds of situations that enhances 
uh, what we are doing many times ungodly because what? Uh, no one doesn't suffer, but it's causing more suffering. What? See, what? Because it's, it is encouraging them in what they're doing. If they had to suffer, they wake up and, 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 uh, and consider their ways. You pray? Now, uh, you, your suffering might differ in kinds of sort from those around you. But if you are living godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer affliction and persecution. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. What? Because the world is anti-church of God. And false religion is anti-church of God. And apart the church of God, anti-church of God. What? How do you know? All of the, the if efforts, all of the issues that arise is because people are trying to get around suffering. And they don't can't get together this and they're just the split of it. What? Because some once it's necessary, once it's not necessary. Go through all that. To humiliate yourself. To humble yourself to that extent. And so we got a situation. You better pray? Listen. The Bible says, when Jesus suffered, he threatened not. It was unjust what they did to him, but he didn't threat. Why? He took it to be an example for us. You better pray. You pray hard. There's something here that you, you, you're going to have to get if you're going to survive this last day of apostasy. All right. Now, there's a purpose in it, too. And if you can sense that, it will sort of uh, mitigate, it, it will ease uh, your, your pain when you're going through. If you sense what's behind it, turn to Lamentations, the book of Lamentations. Oh. And we want uh, verse number 33, 30. chapter 3, verse number 30. See what it says. Okay. All right. 3, verse 11, He giveth. His cheek to him that smited him. Yes. He gives his field full with reproach. Go on. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Listen. The Lord will not cast off forever. He keeps prophesying about Christ the end. Come on. But though he caused grief. Though he caused grief. He, he caused it. Listen, children. Do you know uh, what you're going through now at the adversity? Sometimes it's self induced. But even though God calls it grief, that's He not punishing you. He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to bring the best out of you. God help us come with it. But though He causes grief, though He causes grief, and we all have moments of grief, yet will He have compassion according to the multitude of His mercy. Yet will He have compassion. I mean, you're, you're looking to it, you're getting that with you. And try to encourage you uh, when you are uh, uh, almost uh, diminished to nothing. He causes grief. But listen, uh, you can rest assured this and get this right there down in your little book. When God causes affliction, when He takes you through things that almost despair the life, that's too, almost too much for you. There's a redemptive purpose there. It's not to destroy you, it's to redeem you. Wake up, praise our God. If you can sense that, you can go through uh, in, a, in a better fashion, with a better attitude. But the devil said, well, you are saved and you're going through all this and others didn't go through it, but just a moment. Others cannot run this race for you. Now, now you've been all in your life trying to uh, circumvent hard situations. They've always eliminated fasting. I mean, it's a, it's a, a fad anymore. Maybe they might have an occasional fast day, but there was a time they did it uh, diligently. And that's what happened with demons. What? Uh, Paul, you with Paul. Year after year, going through what Paul went through. But to have loved this present world. What is the attitude of this world? To get to suffer nothing. Get around anything that's suffering. Anything that brings a little uh, toil and pain. They won't get around at any cause. They're better than that age because of the suffering. They're quite a lucrative job, got a family because of a little suffering involved. They, uh, they'll play, many people who back that and play the lottery because they got a, their economy is not good. They want to suffer. When well, you go suffer more because you're not going to hit the lottery. <laughs> you say, you should do that. You say, everybody going to get no $20 million. You ought to know that. They go out of business overnight. 
All right, this is this is what it says now. Uh, God does not what? Come on, then. does not if the Lord will not cast off forever. The Lord will not cast off forever. But though he causes grief, but though he causes grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. See, God weighs your situation. And listen, God does as little as he can in his chest time to bring you to where he wants you. He, he's not getting no delight out of seeing you suffer. He's doing that to redeem you and to bring the best out of you. And there's no way around it. There is no other way you can do it. If you try to avoid it, then you will be on the outside. <clears throat> But I don't know what your subject might be. Do one thing and the other another. Yeah, yeah. Some people are back now because I mean, they're, they're, they cut me. It's, it's not of the part I'm, I'm the chemic in me. Some, uh, f f because I, uh, I, I, I don't have a marriage prospect in mind. I've been, I've been celibate for 20 years. And so what do you do? You relieve yourself. Or the first rock that comes along. But I'm, I'm tired of having the lonesome bedroom blues. <laughs> but guess what? In, in about three or four months, you'll have it again because I ain't going to leave you. <laughs> come on with it, come on with it. But though he caused grief, though he caused grief, yet will he have compassion. Yet, listen, even though God is pushed in a corner to save your soul, he had to cause you to grieve. To get your attention, to to bring out the best, to strengthen your faith. You should be good. See, the Bible says, uh, in your in your patient possession, your soul. Well, God, patient in what? Patient in tribulation. Get the word of God. See what? I mean, don't. I have one far I can go. I can't take anymore. All this that attitude. That's the detrimental attitude. Detrimental. I'm just tired. I that's the moment. Tired of what? God was tired of you sinning for 25, 30 years too. But he said you're to hell. Mm -hmm. How you gonna go through one or two little tests and try? I'm tired. I can't take no more. I'm tired of you messing with me and, and, and push me around like a football. I'm, I'm just tired. What well, I do say. Amen. You know what God's gonna do? You know what? Say, I was tired of you. That's right. I'm getting real tired again. Amen. Amen. Come on, listen. Put in your patience, bless yourself. I would patience to go through uncomplainingly. You go through hard places and suffering without murmuring, without complaining. The children of Israel were going through, but they were complaining every step of the way. Yeah. You all say, you don't know what I'm going through, and we don't know how much you're fussing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, say to God, that's why not many people go to heaven, and that's why people don't teach perfection, because what, they got all these flaws and barnacles, and they're unwilling to allow the Holy Ghost to burn them off of them. That's what it's all about. You know what Jesus did? Jesus was holy, holy, holy. People I want to get saved. I want to get saved. I want to get run to the office. He's holy. Now, before you make all of this sensational uh, display, uh, say that kind of cause. I want you to understand what you're going through. This is not a game. This is not a social club. This is not a political thing. I want you to understand. Say that kind of cause. Well, Lord, you might discourage me. Well, I'm going to be realistic. That's right. I'm not being pessimistic. I'm being realistic. You understand? Know Jesus said, I'm not going to sacrifice this truth for, um, for a big congregation or for a mega church. I'm not going to do it. I want you to understand what it's all about. We got standards. That's right. Amen. And this is the situation, see? And, and we can't let you contaminate it. Come on, come on, come on. Can't let you contaminate it. And then if you deviate, there's no place. You don't know where you're going to stop. Amen. when I've been around for over 60 years. And they want, I've seen people that uh, did it, let something creep in, and that's why they get out of control. I remember they brought in the finger ring, and all this kind of, after a while, you know, little shots in here, and then a uh, little, little, little ring there, and then chandeliers. <laughs> see, it, it, a little fight, it's a little fight that's brought the van. See, they, they, they want to make an allowance here, and, and when they try to stop it, they can't stop it. See, you, it has a domino effect. When you move on, the whole thing falls. Mm. That, that, we've inherited that. That's what we are today. Where people deviate and get by with it. They throw a hand to the door to see if you accept it. 
you, you should do toss the tag back out. That's right. And if you get hit by it, then they try it again. And they'll go a little further next time. And a little further. And after a while, what they're doing it has no relationship to holiness at all. What did he say? The Lord does not accept us with him. In many times, you cast your only hope away trying to get off easy. Honey, that I don't want to do this to you, Lord. Lord, why? And we, we I'm sure many times you poses that question, Lord, why? Why? Well, this is a situation I can understand. Sometimes you don't understand all the details. And that and you might uh, in your anguish say, Why? We understand that was a proper attitude. That's a possibility. But this is the situation. You don't always have to know the reason why. And maybe you many times you don't need to know the reason why. And if he told you why, you probably wouldn't want it. It's because of your obstinance. And because of your 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 complaining and because of your money, that's why. And I got to get that out of you. And the only way I can do it is press it out of you. Because you're not going to stop. You didn't go one sermon after another and you didn't do it. Well, Lord, this, this, why do I have to suffer the Lord? Now, oh, if you don't do something by Monday, uh, I know you can. <laughs> Dr. Zavorkin, he'll take care of you. He'll cut it out of you. Oh, Many people have died prematurely because they couldn't wait on God. Mm. And then, when you, this, let me tell you Do you know you're the best Christian that somebody knows? If they, and, and you are, and they're almost idolizing you in a sense. And when you do it, basically right. that's an acceptable right. step. You're not only living for yourself, you're living for others. People yes, got out of you. Yeah. That's the situation. And, uh, 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 and if you begin, you know, I used to have a lot of young men. You, you pray hard around the house. You be, uh, you're getting saved. You come by and we feed them and whatnot. And so uh, they be watching uh, the husband and wife relationship and see how if my wife says something off, how I come back at her. They watch their they watch you. They watch you. Your children, yeah, your, your children are playing in the floor, playing marbles, but they're watching dead. I don't like to ring that. I don't like to ring them with that response. You're teaching them something. Uh, and guess what? When they get married, they're going to do the same thing to their husband. Yeah. They got it from you. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the one. God does not affect us willingly. He does it because there's no other way he can accomplish the purpose. I, I can't bless you otherwise. Will you please listen? Say, I can't get to you otherwise. Well, Lord, anything but this, well, that's just what you need. I, 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 I tried this, I tried that, and you didn't move, you didn't move up. And I tried this to get you rid of it, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't abandon it. You know it now, my sons. And the time they don't actually go, they be on certain issues. I said, oh, what? Oh, man, you know what man? You, you off here. You know it. Said, oh, my wife's going to do my shit, my wife's going to do this. Wait just a moment. You know, your wife, when my, your mother would I didn't even detail about how many times I come back after like that. Come on, come on, come on. And you didn't get that from me. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to endorse it. But this situation, you shouldn't have been. You know? And uh, your mother, your daughter, you, 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 you're talking back to your husband. You, you're not submissive. You never saw me come back at daddy. <laughs> Doors closed. <clears throat> but you should be able to do that. You should be able to do that. You, 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 you never saw me. You never saw me coming like that. Uh, a question was uh, raised on an occasion. Already, I think I heard it. And I said, oh, what a challenge. And so, uh, this lady, I think, had 12 children. And they had uh, a mediocre income, and they were doing so well, and so uh, and that was an ideal uh, atmosphere in the home. 
And so uh, there were those who proceeded to question them. I said, now, why do you take vacation? And, and, what, and what brought you to this point? And how? I noticed uh, your demeanor here, and, and I noticed your submission, and, and uh, even under pressure. You know what she said? And, I, and this is stamped indelibly in my mind. I'll never forget this. I have thousands of something else. She said, she said, I never, get the, get the whole thing, get, analyze what I'm saying. I never saw mother argue with dad or press a point. Not press a point. In other words, and you know you're right, and you wouldn't press it. Okay, if I say you don't understand, okay, then I will. I said, it. Then God showed to me. But I, I'm right. I'm three times seven, that'd be 21. So I put my hand on my hip and the back bones in <laughs> I'm going to tell you, they were, and I said, Lord, help us. I don't know where she went to church. I wasn't sure of that, but I never saw Mama argue with Dad and press a point. If we couldn't get together on it, she wouldn't press it. I don't care how right she was, how insistent. Did that mean nothing to her demeanor at all? And I, and I inherited that. And that's how we've been able to manage under these dire circumstances. What? I inherited that. I had an example before me. And I know it was feasible. So I think it could be accomplished. And I, and I insisted that I would be the same way. And she was a very amiable individual. And in fact, she's on the radio because of, of that kind of demeanor. How, how, did, how, how, how did she get like that? Well. I wish I had the rest of the story because I would certainly like to convey it to some of you. All right. Before I was there's another, there's another passage here we want to explore, if you will. Come to Greek Hebrews chapter 12. Begin at verse number 5. Hebrews 12, 5. If you please. All right. Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. You have forgotten the exhortation that speaketh unto you as unto children. My son. My son. Despise not thou the chastising of the Lord. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Wait just a moment now. When God rebukes you, don't you? I'm not coming back to church. I don't see that. Just one moment, please. Who do you think you are? You, you're the one that's going to suffer the loss, not God. Right. We need God. God doesn't need us. He's going to be God. If all you go into the he will still be God. Mm -hmm. I think you're punishing God by going home and taking your, your little ball with you. And you probably leave because you got the message anymore. <laughs> Don't despise the chasing of the Lord. I wonder why. And then you tell some like Charlie Brown. Well, I don't know why someone always picking at me. I got always one thing and another. If it ain't one thing is another. You did, in fact, they made a song at one time. If it ain't one thing is another. And all that, that's, that's all you have. And all you have is, is what they call that devil money. Oh, saints, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, I know what you're going, but you're not really going through. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it ain't one thing or another, well, just a moment, one moment, please. You're not singular, you're not unique. You're not the only one going through. And we, and we, we, need, to, we need to come here. Don't, don't leave us heavy. Amen. Hey, we need some something that's going to cheer us up. Thank the Lord is blessing me. And, and you wonder, and you just, how do we see my God is blessing me? And, 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 all, and all thank God for the joy. And you went through something that's almost unbearable. And you're expressing the delight. Amen. How in the world? One time uh, in Detroit, when we were living there, uh, individual sisters have been there for a while. They both have you don't ever go through anything, do you? <laughs> That's all I do go through. <laughs> but we got, I'm mean, even no calamity Halloween group and it discourage the saints by what I'm going through all the time. Saying right. y'all bless me, praise Lord, y'all pray for me. But that husband of mine, that wife of mine, those children of mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some mine, because they your choice. Nothing. I'm coming. And, and, and I, I came here because I got you to get a little inspiration. You know, I'm going to do nothing myself. 
When I come back, he had to go. I mean, all you people are letting me, he had to go. You <laughs> dumped all it on me, and you go, I shout. Because you dumped it on us. Please leave that alone. <laughs> we got to show you, amen, to get something for our soul, not to be drained yes, by some negativism. Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourges every son whom he receives. God chasing you and allows these things because he loves you. Not because he despises you. Not because he's trying to destroy you or annihilate you. That's not his objective. Do you understand? If you love your children, you'll chastise them. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't mean in anger. I don't mean get mad and go off on them and pacify your wrath. I don't mean that. That's common. That's normal. But I mean you'll chastise them in the right way. And whatever you need to bring them under subjection, you have to do that. If you love them, no. you know, you, and some one person you love them to death by just letting them do what they want to do. No, he's, then you're going to always pet him up when he does something wrong with you. No, you, 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 you straighten him out, you shake him Like uh, one fellow said, sometimes we love our children to death. A uh, uh, little girl had a cat, and it was just such a pet, such a, such a uh, pleasant little animal. And so, he fell in the water and got cold and was shivering. And she brought him in the house to warm him up in the microwave. <laughs> she loved him to death. That's what we do for my children. We love God. We love them. You want to straighten them out. They too, they too sweet. And they are all, they, they're such a, a jewel and, and all this kind of thing that you, you won't chest out. You can't do that. The word of God, you can't do that. You, you, can't, you can't go along with wrong. You might use a different method, but you got to get the same uh, results. Yeah. Read a little more. <laughs> if you endure chastening, if you endure chastening, God do it for you. If you, if you if it's not enjoyable, but you endure it. It's not something you shout of all the time, but you but you, you might cry all night long. You might walk the floor at midnight. Pray, pray. One brother said, uh, he. Uh, had a situation, maybe I guess temperament, maybe over temperament. And so, uh, that when he would provoke, he would rise up. And so, it, when he became aware of his plight, it troubled him to no end. So, uh, see, so he walked up for a night. Lord, this spirit will eventually destroy me. So deliver me from God. Why he got before God and God broke him through it, and I would laugh at it when it come again. When the test come again, I would laugh at it. Tell about the old lady. She was known for her piety, modest, good standards, do the word, and avid church worker. And but she had a, uh, she was she was frightened. She 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 was she was she was frightened, and then a kind of a canting of spirit. And so, uh, but anyway, I have no idea distraction. I don't know what it is. You got them. Let's go. We have a situation here. But we're going to get very quick. Just keep out. But we don't want to be distracted here. Mm, my voice is great. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. We're talking about chasing. We're talking about chasing. So God help us. And we don't know the method that he's going to use to chest time us. Oh but you, whatever it is, it'll just get to us. Amen, amen. It'll get to amen. us. It'll get to us. Praise God. Maybe we'll call one of the ministers to pray. Let's move on. Praise God. Amen. And this lady, uh, you were just, you couldn't fix her bed right. She was sick. You couldn't fix her bed right. You couldn't fix her food right. It's too cold. There's no season in it. Whatever the case was, everything you do, she was a chronic mouth intention. Hello. And whatever you do, I mean, she would come back and 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 uh, and, 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 and terrible with that, that attitude. But she, everything she she wore dresses right, and she was modest, and her uh, face was plain. But that attitude, that attitude, that attitude, a disqualifying attitude. And so, with God in His mercy, in His just timing, brought her to a center. She saw herself as God saw her, and she was so distressed. She was so distressed. So distressed that uh, 
this is when she saw herself, she called over to the real dead bed. And shook that bed. Lord delivered me from this bed. And, then, and she shook that bed. And uh, so God blessed that woman. She'd been saved maybe 25 years or more. But she was such a, a diligent person. And the church kept the church standard. Well, everybody respected her because of her piety. But that attitude never broke until she awoke and saw herself. And God delivered, God delivered the lady. And he said, from that time forth, they never saw that spirit in her again. It was broken, but she could have died. God had mercy upon her. And then it going off in eternity, that spirit. But God showed it to her. And she said, when she saw him, Lord, if this is my plight, I've been going on my piety and my modesty and all these things, and I couldn't really see myself because of all the good things I've been doing. You know, many people are, are camouflaged in that spirit by externality, the external negativism. Better wake up, praise our God, and when God endeavors to show us ourselves, you better wake up, please. When God chest time, he had put on the bed, make us see yourself. And I can name several other instances that were similar where God had to put people on the chestnut rod, under the chestnut rod, to really see themselves as they are in actuality. But it's a blessing. Now, you, you can take it out of way. You, you, you can accept it as a blessing. Or uh, you can uh, get aimed and puffed up and walk out on God. Is that not going through? I've had enough. Well, this is your option. But it's a detrimental one. It's a detrimental one. I've had it, I've had it. I've had it. I just can't keep going by this path this by. I just can't keep going. I just can't keep doing it. It's too much for me. In just a moment, who are you? And you're patient because that's your souls. Read this a little more, please. If you endure chastening, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. God will deal with your sons. What son is he whom the father chasteneth not? All right. But if ye be without chastising, uh -huh. whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards. You're not Sabbath. You're not Sabbath. You're not a legitimate child. If you don't let God chastise you and bring that out of you what's necessary, you're not a legitimate child. My God. That might seem pretty harsh, but that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. And many, and many people, when God chest tied them and they come out of it, they come back just like they left. Job says, when I'm tried, I'm coming forth as gold. You know, well, that's uh, gold is a common uh, element. So I, uh, let me look into that more closely. And, and now I'm reading is that there's nothing you can do to go uh, to diminish the quality of it. You can burn it, it just come out purer. You can beat it, you can roll it into uh, sheets of metal, do what you want to do. There's nothing that you can do to go to diminish the quality of it. And if when God gets through with me, I'm coming forth. And there's nothing you can say to me that would offend me. That you can just undermine me, you do what you want to do, but I'm not going to be diminished. I'm not going to be pulled down to your level. My faith, however I go through affliction, when I come out of it, my faith will be undaunted. And if I don't come out of it, my faith will be undaunted. See, salvation devotion is more involving than the every person even knows about. So God help us out here. All right. Uh, give me a uh, second Corinthians chapter two. Chapter one, please. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies. The Father of mercy. And the God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. Who comfort us all in our tribulation. Listen, listen now. Comfort us, us all in what? In our tribulation. In our tribulation. 
that we may be able to comfort them that we might be able to comfort them that are in any trouble that are in any trouble you cannot comfort somebody else if you're not comforting yourself you can't uh, encourage somebody to go through if you're not going through yourself <coughs> you can't teach another that if you're practicing God help us out here I'm going to tell you say don't take that thing for granted that, but see, you can only comfort others by the comfort that you received, and you can impart it to others. You you be uh, careful. We'll testify beyond our experience. You know, I think it was uh, Horace uh, Bushnell who said, "I've learned more since my little boy died than I did all the rest of my life." The, the poor man. But when God uh, brought that and brought me so low, I learned more through that than I did all the other part of my life. God took me through a, uh, the most difficult situation in the world, and when I came out of it right, I was more blessed and benefited, and in fact, uh, my experience was greater, which maybe would have diminished some to naught, but when God took me through, and I went through right, it did more for me than anything else. All of the church services, all of the sermons I heard, all of the shouts I jumped. And the tremendous thanks to God. Now, I trust we have a different perspective here of affliction. And don't run for relief at the first indication of a tribulation from any source. Some people, it, the first little case uh, what I'm going through, the first little uh, disconcerted situation, the first little disagreement they're ready to just go off and just go off in the left field and, and lose their, their soberness and sensibility. Not willing to stay, take it on his chin like Jesus did. All he had was criticism and ostracism and finally crucifixion. The Bible said, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He wouldn't do it. But he exposed himself to the suffering. He didn't sit up all night trying to figure a way to legitimately retaliate. Definitely not. He took it. And, and, and his character was not diminished. And his demeanor didn't change. His attitude didn't change. He was really resolute in his stand. Show his stand. Nice you get the message, saints. Well, some of your doubters are going through right now at this very moment. This very moment. And if you need help, we've got a prayer room here. We have an altar. Uh, you can kneel away, whatever you should have in shoes. This is a, a, a climactic moment, a serious moment. God help us, God help us, God help us. And we trust that those things that God allows to come your way will get the desired results. We trust that. And will not drive you in the opposite direction. Find that most people, when they uh, get out of order with God and find the defects from the call, they'll uh, mention some event that led them, that pushed them out to get sympathy. That's sad. That's sad. That God can tolerate us. Just waiting for uh, an escape, an easy exit. Shall we look to the Lord? Father, we're thankful for your kindness, your mercies, your love. Thou art God, thou art real, thou art unchangeable. What was required in yesteryears is required today. Bless those souls that were enlightened 
Father, may they resolve in their hearts to get down to bed with God and get filled with the real Holy Ghost so they can stand and get a real genuine testimony. Bless the way do you bow and pray for in your master's name we ask it. And for our sake we pray and we thank you for the same. Amen. You may be seated. We're thankful. I think that we have uh, some visitors with us, and who we welcome. And uh, in this case, you are at liberty to express yourself if you so desire. We thank you for coming, and God bless you. And have that liberty. Have a word. We still have an expression, testimony, whatever. Uh, my name is Julio. I'm Julio Thank you. 